this. Founded in 1959, the Department of Humanity and Social Science is one of the oldest departments in IIT Madras. It is the Humanities Department of IIT that makes this place a university. It feeds in multiple ways into the life of uh, the campus and of its residents and particularly its students. There are people from various cultural backgrounds and various linguistic backgrounds and it offers so much opportunity to interact and learn from each other. This uh, is uh, unique to India in fact because it's, it offers a broad liberal arts curriculum and partly because we are such a multidisciplinary program we also have the opportunity for both our MA and our PhD students to do interdisciplinary work. A lot of our great ideas have the campus and of its residents and particularly its students. There are people from various cultural backgrounds and various linguistic backgrounds and it offers so much opportunity to interact and learn from each other. This uh, is uh, unique to India in fact because it's, it offers a broad liberal arts curriculum and basic because we are such a multidisciplinary program we the opportunity for both our MA and our PhD students to do interdisciplinary work. A lot of our great ideas have the campus and of its residents particularly its students. There are people from various cultural backgrounds and various linguistic backgrounds and it offers so much opportunity to interact and learn from each other. This is uh, uh, unique to India in fact because it's, it offers a broad liberal arts curriculum and basic because we are such a multidisciplinary program we the opportunity for both our MA and our PhD students to do interdisciplinary uh, Thank you Shubra, you can stop sharing. So there has been a technical glitch, uh, I'm sorry for that. I think probably we can start in a minute. It's 6.28, uh, uh, we'll still wait for a minute or two until it uh, turns 6.30. Attention audience, uh, there has been a, a small technical glitch and we'll start the webinar exactly at 6.30. Please do wait. Thank you. Uh, a very good evening to everyone who present uh, virtually through Zoom and YouTube. So this is Rudra from the Office of Global Engagement IIT Madras. Uh, these IRIS webinars are the idea of IIT Madras to showcase the uh, innovative research uh, that is being generated at IIT Madras to various stakeholders like uh, researchers, industrialists, and policymakers. And I'm I'm very glad to share with everyone that these uh, the IRIS webinars are gaining a momentum in the public domain, and we are receiving more number of participation from the public. So, and that's how uh, the IRIS webinars have started and it's running very successfully. And it's my pleasure to welcome you all to the uh, 40th webinar of the uh, IRIS webinar series. So today's webinar is on uh, gallium nitrate devices from the cluster micro, micro electronics and uh, uh, integrated circuits. And this project is being led by Professor Amitav Dasgupta. So to introduce 
professor amitavad das gupta professor gupta has been uh, a faculty member in the department of electrical engineering iit madras since 1993 and he is the uh, is an currently an institute chair professor uh, he has about 200 research publication in international journals and the proceedings of international conferences and uh, has uh, co-authored a book on semiconductor devices modeling and technology so his research interests are in the areas of semiconductor device modeling and a technology mems with a particular focus on gan devices so he is a fellow of the indian national academy of engineering uh, joining as the uh, one of the speaker of today's program we also have uh, professor sankaran anirudhan well uh, professor sankaran uh, is an associate professor in the vlsi group of uh, ee department iit madras his research uh, broad spans uh, the area of analog ic design with specific focus on rf and millimeter wave ics so he obtained his btech ms and phd degrees in 2000 and 2003 and 2006 respectively uh, between 2006 and 2011 he worked in the rf analog group at qualcomm inc and uh, san diego where he designed uh, uh, integrated circuits for cellular uh, rf application so he has been uh, at idm since 2011 and it's my pleasure in welcoming uh, both of the uh, speakers to this session so along with them we also have a uh, professor jean christophe nalathambi professor nalathambi is currently a professor at the uh, university of limoux he is main intensive research is presently focused on the characterization and modeling of semiconductor devices with a special emphasis of tcad physics based simulation he has authored and co-authored more than uh, 110 publication in journal and national international conferences so he he was eu make tpc chair for eu mw 2019 in paris and uh, general co chair for the uh, inmm ic organization in 2008 uh, 18 at brave france it's my pleasure to welcome you to the session and uh, note to uh, participants please use the question and uh, answer box to ask your questions uh, and you can upvote or like the question that may interest you so that the moderator can prioritize them over to you professor nalathambi thank you so uh, uh, you can professor amitav das gupta begin the presentation thank you uh, professor nalla tambi uh, i hope uh, uh, my screen is visible yes sir yes sir it's visible yes okay, okay. so uh, good evening and welcome to everybody uh, today i shall be talking on our center of excellence for gallium nitride research and development at iit madras uh, we have called the center uh, uh, grand which stands for gallium nitride research and development okay, so uh, in this slide we shall give us a, a snapshot of uh, what grand uh, stands for Uh, so in this uh, uh, center we shall be focusing on two types of devices one is the rf devices and the other is power switches and uh, uh, for that we shall be um, working on uh, heterostructure system which is consists of aluminium indium nitride on gallium nitride material system and the devices we shall be uh, working on will be enhancement mode fin missets i shall be talking of these devices in more detail as we go along so the goal for the rf devices uh, work is to realize power amplifier microwave uh, mo sorry monolithic microwave integrated circuits called mmic for short and uh, for the goal for the work on power switches will be to uh, realize uh, dc dc converters for various applications and finally we would like to end up uh, you know making real devices which will be used for various applications we shall package and test these devices so that is the overall goal for our center and for that of course a lot of research work is uh, required and a uh, lot of development work is also required so we call this center the gallium nitride research and development and uh, the team consists of um, myself amitav das gupta and professor aniruddhan who will be talking later uh, we have also professor anjan chakravarti professor dilip nair and professor nandita das gupta as the uh, members of the group 
as well as we will have a, a large number of research scholars working uh, with us for to reach, uh, to uh, achieve the goals we also have uh, collaborators uh, for our project and uh, they include uh, uh, for example sspl which is a, a drdo lab in new delhi uh, exlim and uh, university of limoges in france i'm very happy professor nalla tambi is here from uh, university of limoges uh, as a moderator and we also collaborate with other um, uh, companies like Vico in USA who are actually helping us by providing a lot of our uh, wafers we require for uh, the fabrication. So firstly, I will, uh, for those uh, who are not familiar uh, with this um, gallium nitride based devices, I shall go through uh, some basic uh, fundamentals. Why, firstly, why gallium nitride? Gallium nitride is, uh, Class of uh, comes under a class of devices uh, materials which are called semiconductors. Sorry, which are called wide band gap semiconductors. And you can see from the band gap of gallium nitride here, 3.4 electron volt, which is much higher compared to 1.1 electron volt for silicon. And these, um, if you this, have, this, this if you have, I don't have any slides. I just have the first slide. Oh, so is the slides not moving? No, no moving. Okay, uh, then let me see. Okay. Yeah, now it's okay. S sir, uh, sorry to interrupt. Maybe you can just present these slides. Like you can just go to full screen. Okay. Uh, the, you have to yeah, go. Okay, okay, okay. I, I will do that. Just give me. Yeah. You can play the slideshow. I think that's. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. uh, just to the left of uh, the cursor, that will be a, a box, uh, not a box, yeah, the, the other one, the other one, yeah. this side. Yes, that's it. You're right. Yeah, I did that. So, okay. Yeah, now it's now it's fine. Now it's okay. so, now it's fine. It was not moving. So anyway, let's see if it moves again. So anyway, so this gallium nitride, uh, let me uh, use the pointer again. So uh, this gallium nitride is a wide band gap material and wide band gap materials have higher breakdown field strength in the sense that uh, the amount of electric field it can sustain before breaking down is much higher. You can see compared to silicon, which has 0.3 megavolt per centimeter, the breakdown field strength in gallium nitride is 3.3, more than 10 times. So it can, uh, higher band gap uh, actually depends in higher temperature of operation with and a higher breakdown field strength means that you can operate at higher voltage, okay? Not only that, the mobilities of uh, electrons and the saturation velocity for electrons are also much higher than silicon, okay? So uh, this will mean that the current densities which you can achieve for the same geometry of devices is going to be much higher in gallium nitride compared to, uh, for example, silicon. And in, in addition, uh, we have various interesting heterostructure systems which can be used to make devices. The most important device in this uh, for this uh, gallium nitride is what we call HEMT or high electron mobility transistor. I'll come to that later. On the right, you, what you see is a sort of a pentagon for each of these materials. So you can see that uh, the red is for uh, gallium nitride. Um, uh, the blue is for silicon carbide and the green is for silicon, etc. So um, what you see is the breakdown field strength is higher and the current is higher uh, in gallium nitride compared to other material current densities, which means you can have high power operation. You can also have high temperature operation, which is very important for power devices because there is large power dissipation. So the temperature rises, so it can get high power. So, uh, and also uh, you have, um, uh, the noise figure is, uh, is better for gallium nitride based devices because uh, the, these devices are, uh, you know, uh, these high M devices themselves are, in, uh, they are, the current is flowing through regions where the doping is, is uh, you don't have to dope the material. And so these are some of the advantages of uh, uh, gallium nitride and not surprisingly, I can say that gallium nitride is the second most widely used semiconductor material after silicon. So uh, uh, I have changed the slide. Is it has it changed? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. 
Now, so I assume uh, you are all familiar with uh, uh, MOSFET. So what I will do is I will uh, now introduce you to the HEMT device, uh, which is uh, the corresponding device in gallium nitride. So uh, the, the figure on the left is the MOSFET, where you see the three, uh, the source, gate, drain, and the current will flow between the drain and source. Here, you also have source, gate, drain, but uh, uh, but you have a heterojunction here, aluminum, gallium nitride, and gallium nitride. They form what is known as a quantum well. And in that quantum well, you have a large concentration of electrons with what we call confined in a very narrow uh, region, which we call the two-dimensional electron gas. So this is uh, for this heterostructure system, these electrons are always there and you don't have to apply any bias uh, to create these electrons. They are very high concentration of electrons and they can give rise to very high current. So uh, this is the structure for uh, the um, HEM device. Now, if you look at these two devices, there are some similarities. Um, uh, of course, the source gate drain terminals are there, as you can see. In addition, uh, uh, in the case of a MOSFET, the gate is separated from the semiconductor by a thin oxide layer of two um, nanometer, whereas here there is a barrier material algand, which is about um, Think about 20 nanometer. So in this case, because the gate and the channel separation is more, the gate capacitance is less and actually the HEMS will have a lower transconductance, which is an important parameter. We'll see how to improve on that. So the channel electrons uh, in, this, in the case of um, silicon is from a heavily doped source, but in the case of HEMT, you don't require uh, uh, doping at all. So, uh, uh, and this is therefore a simpler process. Uh, the gate is a very important, uh, there is a difference because in the case of MOSFET, you have a MOS, that you have an insulator in between. So the gate leakage currents are very low. Whereas here in the case of HEMT, there is a short key gate, which results in a higher gate leakage current. Uh, the, the electrons in the MOSFET flow through a heavily doped channel, whereas in the case of uh, HEMT, they flow through undoped channels. So because there is less scattering of electrons, you have higher mobility and higher transconductance. And also the noise is also less in the case of HEMT devices. Uh, the other important difference is that in the case of uh, MOSFET, the gate it overlaps the source and drain. Uh, you can see here, whereas here we, the gate is separated from the source and drain, and these regions are called uh, the access regions, or there is a gate underlap, we say. And this, there is a series resistance here, and this uh, is one of the, again, a drawback compared to the MOS structure. But the major uh, problem is, uh, uh, is in the case of uh, MOSFET, you usually, in a CMOS, for example, use enhancement mode devices. So these devices are normally off. So you have to apply a positive gate voltage to turn them on. Whereas here, the devices are normally on. So we call them depletion mode devices. You have to apply a negative gate voltage to turn them off. So this results in a dual power supply and complicated circuitry. So that is what we are we will try to avoid as we uh, in our work. We shall come to that in a while. So uh, this Ganhemt also has evolved over the years. So this is the first figure on the left shows uh, the traditional uh, algan gan hem device. But to, in, uh, to reduce the gate leakage current, uh, uh, sometimes a gate dielectric is introduced. So this is called a mis -hemmed. Okay, so the insulator in between uh, reduces the gate leakage current. And uh, because of this insulator also, the electric field at the gate, uh, at the gate uh, edge and the, towards the drain is reduced. So the breakdown voltages of the devices are also improved. So the mishemt is actually an improvement on the, on the hemt. And now uh, people are working on what we call uh, fin mishems. So this is, uh, you know, something similar to a fin, uh, fin fet. If you are familiar in the uh, uh, the uh, technology nowadays used uh, in silicon uh, is uh, using fin fin fets. So it is a similar structure. We have a fin like uh, device here with the same aluminum gallium nitride gallium nitride, and you can see the gate is actually wrapping around the. Uh, fin and there is of course a thin uh, dielectric layer which reduces the leakage current. So uh, uh, for, when you look at the breakdown voltages, uh, the hemt is low but mishemt is high and same mis fin mishemt will be high. The gate control is 
higher for fin because the gate is wrapping around the entire device and so the short channel effects are low. The on resistance also can be made low uh, by actually uh, increasing the uh, sharing the uh, access regions between independent uh, individual fins. We, uh, uh, then the transconductance also is high in the case of uh, fin emission because uh, of the higher gate capacitance. And the most important thing is you can actually realize enhancement mode devices by going with a low fin, head, uh, fin width. So if you reduce the fin width, the devices can, you can realize uh, enhancement mode devices because the side gates, the gates from the side will actually deplete the uh, two deck. And so uh, that is the uh, most interesting thing about this fin distance. So uh, let, let me then come to why we have taken up this, uh, this grand. Well, grand uh, devices have already demonstrated remarkable performance uh, with both high power and high frequency domains. Uh, uh, I just want to point out that uh, although Algan GAN is the traditional uh, heterostructure for HEMS, we are mostly working on aluminum indium nitride GAN heterostructures, which has certain advantages over Algan GAN, uh, and it, it gives better performance. And also, we, uh, presently, all GAN HEMS uh, commercially available are depletion mode devices, but our um, focus in this project is to realize enhancement mode on normally on devices. So GAN devices are important for RF power amplifiers and low noise ampli uh, amplifiers, which will be very useful in 5G systems, which are coming up, you know, and uh, enhancement mode uh, GAN devices will make the circuit much simpler. So that is the motivation for doing this. In power electronics applications also, uh, if you are able to switch power at higher frequencies, the uh, parasitics, you know, uh, elements like inductors, capacitors, uh, transformers, whatever you have in the circuitry will become uh, uh, will become smaller, and that will reduce the size and weight of this uh, of this equipment. So this is uh, the motivation for actually working in power electronics applications. Okay, so just to give you an overview of the proposed work. Uh, so uh, we, uh, this work will involve technology development of e e enhancement mode, aluminum indium nitride, gallium nitride, pin misems, and associated passive components like inductors and capacitors. We have already done a lot of work in this. I will present some of these uh, uh, the next few slides. Uh, characterization and compact model development. Compact model development is also very important if you want to make uh, circuits because with the only with good models you can make circuits. Here also we have made a lot of work and we have an in-house, uh, we have developed an in-house compact model for GAN based devices which we are using. Uh, we have designed fabrication and characterization of power amplifier MMICs which we, we are already working. and. Uh, the development of GAN-based DC-DC converters, we shall take up a little later in the phase two of our work. So just to show you uh, some devices which we made in our lab. So this is me, these are mishemts with uh, 225 nanometer gate length fabricated at IIT Madras. So uh, this is the device which I shown here, actually fabricated device in our lab. So uh, this is the gate, there are two sources and uh, these are actually two devices. The gate is very narrow, you cannot even see it so small. This is the drain. and. Uh, uh, in this figure on the right, you actually showed the enlarged view of the gate. This is the gate and this the, side, the source and drain are on the two sides. So this is gate length is 225 nanometer. And this is the characteristics of the device, the drain current voltage characteristics. The currents are quite high, 900 milliampere. We can get maximum 900 milliampere per millimeter, which is quite high. And this shows the uh, drain uh, transfer characteristics and the transconductance. The maximum transconductance we got was 285 millisiemens per millimeter, which is also very high. The same device, the breakdown voltages, we are able to get about 94 volts and the cutoff frequencies, we are able to achieve a 58 gigahertz, uh, FT and Fmax 40 gigahertz. So these are made for RF applications. So these are very good numbers, but uh, of course we have to improve on this. So we are actually working even uh, to achieve much higher frequencies, much higher breakdown voltages and higher currents. So just want to show you uh, the fin misems, which I was talking about. So we have also made fin misems in our laboratory. So what you see here is uh, these are the fins, okay, which you can see here. 
Uh, these are the fins and these are the separated by gaps so a large number of fins the actual structure is shown on the figure on the right so each one you can see the large number of fins the gate is coming like this and you have the source and drain so there are a large number of fins in parallel and each fin looks something like this so we have the fin width is 100 nanometer in our case the source drain separation is 4.25 micron gate length is 220 nanometer and uh, the this, this is the separation between source and gate and gate to drain. So and uh, I'll just show you the uh, characteristics. So this is for the miss uh, hemmed and this is for the miss fin hemmed, uh, fin miss hemmed. Okay, you can see that the miss hemmed has sh short channel effects uh, and when you go to 20 volts or so, the current increases because of what we call short channel effects. Whereas this characteristic curve looks almost like a textbook, uh, you know, perfect uh, characteristics. Even at 20 volts, the, the curves are very flat. And if you look at the trans, uh, transconductance, you know, here you have a peak transconductance, uh, it peaks and then falls off, whereas here it is almost uh, flat for over a wider range. So this will be much will be useful for uh, designing power amplifiers. So advantages of fin missing, less short channel effects, higher transconductance and flatter characteristics, higher drain current higher on-off current ratio we get, and possibility of enhancement mode device. You can see here, whereas for the um, uh, mis the break, uh, the threshold voltage is about uh, minus five volt here. It has reduced to minus uh, less than minus 1.5 volt for the fin hems. If you go for narrower fins, about 60 nanometer or so, we can go to enhancement mode. That is our prediction. So th th we will be working on that. So this is um, what I have to present, and uh, I will now uh, request uh, Anirudhan to present the remaining part on GAN power amplifiers. Uh, thank you, Professor Amitabh. So in the next couple of slides, I'd like to uh, kind of introduce uh, the basic concept of a GAN power amplifier, what the circuit might look like, and uh, in, in a very simplified way, and more importantly, where it fits in. So uh, first, I want you. I, I want to show you where the GAN power amplifier would fit in in an overall power frequency kind of scenario, because there are various applications which require very high powers, uh, very high frequency operation, or both. And as you can see, these are occupied by various uh, semiconductor technologies. So typically, the sub watt uh, power regions are normally occupied by silicon germanium normally by uh, you know bipolar bjt technologies of various kinds and examples of these would be for example wireless lan power amplifiers and so on then at the or, or maybe very short range communication then at the next level for uh, cellular transmitters you are operating at the uh, 1 to 10 watt level and these frequencies go uh, you know earlier used to go till a few uh, gigahertz, but nowadays go till several tens of gigahertz. And uh, similarly, you also have other medium power uh, transmitter requirements in wireless communication. And that region is occupied by the gallium arsenide uh, technology. Now, if you look at uh, silicon again, you are able to get more power, several tens of watts, uh, if you are uh, able to use, uh, you know, uh, LDMOS technology. So that occupies the high power but low frequency. This comes the lower frequency operation requirement or the capability comes with the fact that you have a you have a lot of parasitic capacitance. So gallium nitride occupies a unique portion of this uh, you know of this uh, scenario, where it is able to operate at very high powers. So it's able to give you maybe ten watts to hundred several hundreds of watts, and at the same time operate at very high frequencies. So the requirements for this then uh, can be, uh, you, you need to think of it in two ways. Uh, the high power comes with uh, uh, two requirements. One is very high power supplies. So you are looking at several tens of volts, maybe 28 volts or 35 volts. Similarly, to deliver that much power while uh, having low parasitic capacitance, you need to have very high power density in these devices. So you're talking about several hundreds of milliamps uh, per millimeters. So now, uh, obviously, you do have several challenges with gallium nitride uh, power amplifiers. But yeah, this includes, you know, lower gains compared to uh, gallium arsenide uh, and poor or high frequency characteristics at this time. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. 
So the key components we need for a power amplifier are three. One is the basic uh, gallium nitride device. In this case, we are looking at a MISCHEM device at this time. The second are spiral inductors. So basically inductors by coiling metal uh, on, these, uh, on, the, uh, on the semiconducting substrate. And number three, you need capacitors. So typically these are uh, built as metal insulator, metal capacitors. Next slide, please. So in this slide, I have kind of uh, uh, shown a highly simplified circuit diagram of a power amplifier. So in the center you have of the power amplifier, you have the MISM device. So that gives us the active gain. Now to bias the device at the input, so I have shown a series capacitance and a shunt inductance. And uh, similarly to bias the drain, I have shown an RF choke. Now, apart from these, you also need very, you might very well need uh, matching networks. So uh, at the output, for example, I have shown it as a resonant LC match so that the power amplifier is going to be matched to the standard impedance, RF impedance of 50 ohms at the input and the output. Corresponding to these components that we need, uh, inductors, uh, capacitors, and uh, transistors, I have shown uh, one possible way uh, of achieving these. Uh, so by showing the cross-sectional view of uh, such a proposed uh, you know, MMIC. And uh, uh, one last thing I wanted to point out here, uh, the gate voltage in typical depletion mode gallium nitride devices would be a uh, gallium nitride power amplifiers would be a negative voltage normally, which means you now need a separate biasing circuit to bring up the power amplifier and generate this negative voltage. So do you need to make sure the gallium nitride device now needs to be uh, uh, powered up in a specific sequence and because it's an al always on device, you have to be very careful about the power up sequence and you also need to generate negative voltages. So these two requirements will be uh, uh, simplified or removed if we are, if, if uh, you, you have an enhancement mode gallium nitride device. And that is one big thrust of this uh, grand uh, project. Next slide, please. So uh, I, I will kind of end by pointing out uh, some uh, common applications of gallium nitride power amplifiers. So one very common application is uh, so far has been for applications such as radar, uh, where you basically use the amplifier uh, in pulsed mode. So you basically have a certain several microseconds of pulse width and you operate it with the duty cycle. So basically you operate it for maybe, you know, a few microseconds, then for 10 times that time you keep it off and so on. And you almost always use sinusoidal inputs. But another uh, very common application that is coming up is for uh, 5G base station transmitters, where you are going to be, you are going to use them with modulated signals, where you have a very large peak to average power ratio. And the saturated power can be several, uh, you know, uh, 100, uh, you know, 100 watts or more. And finally, a very common place where we expect them to be used are in test and measurement equipment where the requirement for circuit performance is extremely stringent. Next slide, please. So I will kind of end the talk by, you know, uh, introducing the list of investigators for this project. Uh, Professor Amitav uh, is the PI and he uh, presented the first portion of this talk. Uh, I presented the second portion. Uh, along with us, we have Professor Anjan, Professor Dilip and Professor Nandita, who are all uh, uh, investigators for this project. Uh, thank you for patiently listening to us. Uh, we will now take uh, move on to the discussion session where we take questions. Okay, thank you very much. So thank you for suffer for inviting me. Very interesting topics. It's a very nice uh, presentation also from one of the um, technology aspects and the uh, design, circuit design aspect also. So I'm looking 
if some questions here. There is one question probably for Professor Dasgupta. Can we make solar panels with gallium nitride and what will be the cost compared to silicon? Yeah, solar panels using gallium nitride is, I mean, uh, I, I don't think because uh, the, the wavelengths do not match. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll ask Nandita. Uh, one Maybe of I questions. should take this question. Yeah. Uh, so gallium nitride based solar cells, I mean, this is the uh, new thing. And uh, theoretical estimate says that using nitride based semiconductors, we can actually cover the entire visible spectrum. So that will be very attractive from a solar cell point of view. The only problem is that for the solar cell, you actually need a PN junction. And it's not very easy to have a PN junction in gallium nitride. It is possible, but still, you know, doping it P type is uh, a relatively diffic more difficult process. And of course, it will be much more expensive. And that is probably one reason why the gallium nitride solar cells have still not uh, taken up uh, the way uh, the gallium based hemp have taken up. But uh, yes, I mean, the future looks bright. Uh, starting from indium nitride to gallium nitride, we can actually cover the entire visible spectrum. So that way it's very attractive, particularly from the point of view of tandem solar cells. But they will be mostly, you know, high efficiency solar cells. So may not be much used for terrestrial application because of the high cost, but uh, they may be used for special application space applications. Mm. It's also for you and Professor Nandita Desgupta. One question, could you explain why misempt structure is preferred over PGEN, uh, EMT, which is already commercialized? Okay, P, PGEN, HEMT are also used in order to realize enhancement mode device, but then again, the structure will become more complicated. So that way, misempt is a simpler structure and misempt actually is used mm. in order to reduce the wow. leakage current. So uh, whether you are using a P uh, gallium nitride or not, uh, the gate leakage will be generally more because of the short key gate. So in order to reduce the gate leakage and thereby reduce the power dissipation, we introduce an, a dielectric layer between the gate and the uh, barrier layer. So that is a mishemt basically. So mishemt is primarily in order to reduce the uh, gate leakage current. Now, uh, another benefit of misempt is that by engineering the charges in this dielectric, it is also possible to modulate the threshold voltage. In fact, we have already done some work and we have been able to demonstrate enhancement mode uh, mm -hmm. devices using this misempt. Just like people use PGAN and NGAN uh, combination, we have also been able to do uh, enhancement mode device using misempt. So in this, in this uh, project, in this grant, what we plan to do is combine the, uh, you know, Miss Finhemt uh, uh, so that we can have, we can leverage the benefit of a Missemt and also the benefit of a Finhemt. Okay, thank you. Um, There is also one question about the transconductance of your devices. Uh, yeah, the transconductance of our devices presently are nearly 300 millisiemens per millimeter. The advantage here again for fin misempt is that uh, if you if you look at the transconductance plot, you will find that for misempt also we are getting the peak value of transconductance is pretty much the same. But mm. for misempt, what we find is that it reaches the peak and then it falls pretty sharply. Whereas for Miss Finhemt, you will find that uh, it uh, stays at that high value of GM for a uh, considerably larger range of bars. So that is the advantage. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, that's uh, okay. That's uh, question. Why a thin layer of ALN layer is introduced between Algan Gan as a barrier layer? Hmm. That's a special layer. Uh, that is yeah. what they are asking, right? So that is a special layer. Uh, yeah. Special. I mean, 
yeah, uh, just the aluminum nitride has a much larger band gap, and so it, uh, mm. it, it gives better confinement of the electrons. Okay, so the actual uh, concentration of electrons in the barrier uh, in the uh, two deck is make, becomes much higher. Mm. That is why we have an aluminum nitride. Um. I can stop sharing, I believe. Yeah, so. There is one question that can we use in highly radioactive area or in space without shielding? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, actually, nitrates are comparatively more radiation resistant, but I'm not sure whether you can use it without shielding. Yeah. There is also one question with the advantage of can on silicon carbide, I think, on thermal, thermal purpose. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So basically, you know, I mean, we all know that it's impossible to, not impossible, but it's prohibitively expensive to have bulk gallium nitride substrate. So we have to use some other substrate. Typically, there are three substrates that we can think of. One is silicon carbide, the other is sapphire, and the third is silicon. They all have their uh, advantages and disadvantages. Silicon carbide, of course, will have a, uh, has a much better uh, thermal conductivity and therefore from the power dissipation point of view silicon carbide substrate is very good but then silicon carbide substrates are also more expensive uh, sapphire mm. that way is uh, a sort of compromise choice uh, sapphire of course will have the heat dissipation problem and uh, silicon is the other possibility Silicon is the cheapest substrate available. And that is why gallium nitride on silicon, that technology has really, you know, uh, taken up, uh, it, it has uh, been the focus of a lot of research, particularly from the growth people. Growing gallium nitride on silicon is not very easy, but if it can be, people are now able to do that. And that definitely will make the cost much less. But then, of course, you will have the problem of a lower breakdown voltage because silicon carbide as a substrate, the vertical breakdown would be much less. Yeah. So I just want to add that in our lab, we have worked on all three substrates. And uh, the results I showed on uh, MISEMS are actually on silicon. And uh, we have a collaborator who supplies us with these papers, and we are happy with that. And But uh, for RF devices, uh, silicon carbide substrate is uh, best. And we have been working on silicon carb carbide substrates also. Mm. Um, one question also, what is the advantage of using allium indium nitride gallium layer instead of allium gallium nitride? Yeah, so aluminum indium nitride, um, yeah, one thing is aluminum gallium nitride is not lattice matched to gallium nitride. So that is one disadvantage. Uh, whereas aluminum indium nitride is lattice matched to gallium nitride. So there are no defects at the, there will be much less defects at the surface. And uh, the, so that, and uh, there is also less, um, uh, you know, and not only that, the polarization, I'm not, we have not talked about uh, something in these devices called polarization. Uh, these are all pyroelectric materials and they give rise to polarized uh, uh, charge, spontaneous polarization charge. And uh, so this uh, results in the two deck formation and uh, we get much higher electron concentrations for aluminum indium nitride uh, on GAN systems compared to ALGAN GAN systems. And the current densities uh, which you get are much higher. So these are the some of the advantages why we use uh, gallium nitride, uh, al al which uh, why we are using aluminium uh, indium nitride on GAN rather than ALGAN on GAN. Mm. So uh, to add to that, this aluminium indium nitride with a particular aluminium mole fraction is perfectly lattice matched to gallium nitride. And when we are saying aluminium indium nitride, we actually mean that aluminium 0 0.83, indium 0 0.17 nitride. Mm. 
that is perfectly that is matched to gallium nitride so for even from a reliability point of view this is much better because you see algan gan uh, substrates will always have some uh, defects and therefore there will be some stress so if the device is undergoing continuous operation the stress can create defects and mm. in terms of aluminium indium nitride gallium nitride that possibility is much less so from a reliability point of view these devices are much better mm. There is a lot of questions. So. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, we are glad that it's generating so many questions. Yeah. There is one general question for you. Or IIC folks after GAN Foundry, can we have access to a project proposal which they submitted to the government? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it, has, it has actually taken shape. We hope that IIC, uh, uh, they, are, they are pioneering this. In fact, we are all in it, uh, in this gallium nitrate foundry. So we hope that uh, eventually, you know, there will be a commercial setup. Yeah, in fact, uh, also not only ISC, uh, Semiconductor Complex Limited or SCL in Chandigarh, they are also uh, uh, trying to uh, set up a gallium nitride line. So there are a lot of things coming up in the country. So there are a lot of, there will be a lot of opportunities. Is, uh, there is also where we can actually implement this device, commercial or also, and what type of setup is it like that? Yeah, the, the actually, gallium nitride devices are already, uh, you know, widely being used. In fact, uh, most laptop chargers and all, you know, now uh, they are using gallium nitride, and that's why they become smaller and uh, less weight, you know, compared to the earlier versions. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, uh, the things are changing, and... Um, and um, it's true that a um, uh, lot of uh, work is going on still in the laboratory stage, but uh, they are going to, uh, we are very confident, you know, they will make a very big impact uh, quite soon. Must remember that gallium nitride hem technology is not very old. It is still, mm. I mean, it's about, uh, we are in the second decade or so, whereas uh, with silicon technology, it was more than six decades old. So, uh, you know, uh, so things are all so that is a more interesting from a research point of view but a lot of things are getting com commercialized and uh, hopefully uh, very soon we will have a lot more products actual uh, products on gallium nitride yeah I think uh, I just want to add. Uh, okay, uh, we are we will be happy to answer questions offline. Also, if uh, you have some questions, um, uh, you can uh, uh, from our group. Uh, you have uh, our email addresses from on our websites. Um, uh, you can go and we can ask questions. Uh, uh, if you are interested in collaborating with us or working with us, uh, please uh, you can contact us. Uh, we can see how we can work together. And so, uh, you know, so I think we can, uh, if we have other questions, you are free to ask them. 
uh, later through emails. Um, I have also one question to Dr. Anidran. So um, concerning design aspects, uh, yes. what is the frequency used for the power amplifier? Uh, this is going to be at about uh, uh, probably around 5 gigahertz is what we are thinking right now. So that means that the FT of the devices we are fabricating should need to be much higher, maybe uh, maybe four, maybe four, four times that, three to four times that at least, A F max rather. Mm -hmm. So you use also compact model with uh, for the design with the EDS or yes, yes. So uh, Professor Anjan is the expert in the team on compact modeling. So we are working on the modeling aspect also, and but right now we are getting, you know, we will get started off with the design purely by measuring the S parameters because that is often good enough to build the power amplifier. And after that, we will, you know, use the model to get more accurate, uh, you know, aspects such as linearity and so on. You cannot do it with uh, S parameters easily. So that aspect, we will come to it later. Okay. For the modulated signals. Yes. That's linearity. Mm -hmm. And we, on the compact, compact model, you have introduced also TAPS also, uh, TAPS model inside. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Like so I, I'll answer that. Yeah, we are introducing traps already. Uh, one uh, PhD student, he has um, developed a model for traps, and he has been able to show that uh, it is, uh, you know, for some, uh, basically the buffer traps. So he has included mm -hmm. effect of buffer traps on the model. And now he's uh, going to work on uh, the other traps, like barrier traps in the barrier or something. Uh, other tra traps. So, but uh, the effect of buffer traps we have included in our compact model. That's very interesting. Very, very interesting and important also for the designer. That's yeah. very, very important to make a good modeling. Uh, in fact, we were also very uh, interested. Uh, see, I mean, I, the student actually showed that by introducing the buffer traps, not only the transient characteristics, but the DC characteristics also get modulated. And most of the compact models, they take care of this by, uh, you know, using the mobility as the fitting parameter. They just vary the mobility in order to match the DC characteristics. Whereas actually the current reduces because of the buffer traps. So he has been able to demonstrate that very nicely. Sure. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work to do, yeah, with the traps modeling. Oh, yeah. It's important. Yeah. So you make also LNA also power amplifier, yes, but a LNA design also. Uh, at, no, at this time we are looking only at power amplifiers. Maybe in the next phase we will look at when we will look at uh, uh, LNAs. Mm. Okay. That's really good. Um, I know you have some. There's a lot of uh, technology aspect questions, but no anything about the circuit design. Yeah, so we can uh, take these questions. Uh, as I said, uh, we will be open yeah. to the questions afterwards also. Afterwards, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think globally, gen generally, after again, there is another technology, interesting technology to develop for the yeah. time. Gallium oxide. Gallium oxide is, uh, people are working, already started working. <laughs> mm -hmm. so that has a even, even, even higher, higher band gap. Yeah. Oh, okay. And if you if you follow uh, Shockley's uh, prediction, then eventually I think we are all going for diamond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There is one question, I think, what about GAC? I don't know what is uh, in English, uh, GAC. Wait a minute, just one question here. Ah, you, you, one question also, can you comment on vertical GAN devices? You make also GAN de vertical GAN devices or? 
we don't make in our lab, but there is a lot of work on vertical yeah. devices and the breakdown voltages they achieve there are much, much higher. higher. Yeah, mm. so we don't work on that. That is also a general question also. You are using also TCAT simulation software, no? Yeah. Yes, 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 we are doing that. Yeah. So that's, uh... That is one interesting, it's a very interesting session. Thanks IIT Madras for organizing this. I just have a question like, what is the reach status now? Is it in manufacturing and commercializing phase, this technology, DRDO are also working on to use the high power radars. What is the role of IITM in the project? We have a collaboration with SSP uh, DRDO and uh, we are uh, actually uh, working with them uh, in, in some way. In fact, a lot of the specifications that we are using to fabricate our devices, we have obtained it from DRDO. So they have practical applications. Yeah. For example, radar applications and all. So. Mm. Okay, I think, uh, I think uh, we can see other questions so you can reply. By email, I think. Yeah, I think uh, we can, uh, as yeah. I mentioned, uh, I think uh, we can take questions. After. Yeah. There's one question about gallium carbide. You use also gallium, gallium carbide. I have not come across gallium carbide. The gallium gallium carb oxide is a promising high band gap material that many people are. Uh, yeah, gallium carbide is not possible because uh, this is a uh, group three and group four. I don't know, it's not possible. It may be possible to form, but I mean, I, I haven't really come across much. There is some papers, but uh, sure, it's, I think it's not possible, yeah. Mm. Okay, I think, uh, uh, I don't know what which simulation software. I think for the circuit, I think EDA software you use, no? We use, we use Centaurus. Centaurus. Uh, Centaurus for TCAT simulation, but yeah. for yeah. circuit design, for circuit design is EDS, no? Uh, yes, yeah, um, so for circuit design, we are using Cadence uh, and we also Perfect. have EPOF. We have both. Mm. Uh, so from the IC side, we are more comfortable with Cadence normally for most of our uh, integrated circuits. Mm -hmm. But uh, we also have, uh, we have both. We use both ESOF and this. ESOF, and okay. Okay. Okay, I think. Uh, I saw some questions about uh, business uh, scopes. Uh, so, business. Yeah, so I mean, we would, we would really like to collaborate. So, I mean, uh, please contact us offline, uh, send a mail to us and we'll explore how we can work together. Now one question about any business scope either. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I think uh, you cannot miss. Uh... Okay, once again, uh, 
very interesting topics and very uh, I'm very enjoyed to to be as moderator for this session. Thank you very much for inviting me. That's uh, I hope I'll come in India next year. Yes, we do hope okay. to. <laughs> Okay, it's very, very interesting. And also we can have a lot of opportunities also to make circuit design also. I have to look for other, uh, my colleagues also on power devices also to make circuit design and why not? So it will yeah. be very interesting. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, that will be, I don't know, you have to make a, another project uh, with other colleague in order to, so you can, you, you can, um, Realize also, no, build the circuits also for you. So you have the resistance, and they're very, very nice. So it's a, it's a good test to make. That's very important. Okay, so very, very nice, interesting, and thank you so much for this kind presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Nalathambi, for uh, moderating this session so well. Uh, I mean, indeed to say, this was a very wonderful session, and, and uh, to be honest, and we have received a lot number of questions than the, the other webinars. I mean, the, the question and answer box have been pulled in with a lot of questions. So thank you once again, professors, for making this uh, possible. And uh, thank you, audience. Please uh, show us support, and uh, please uh, join with us for the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you. Yeah.